Uh, let's jump into Eastern Michigan. We got two more that we got to knock out here. The Eastern Michigan Eagles. And you know how much I love Chris Creighton. Uh, went seven and six last year, which was uh, which was really good, really good for them. Went four and four in the conference. Uh, they were five and eight against the spread. They had some really unlikely wins, just random stuff. You know, Western Michigan, everything else, where they were winning games by like one point here. Um, you know, Creighton is the offensive coordinator too here. So uh, if if the offense was was good. It played well on him. Ben Bryant, the quarterback, transferred back over to Cincinnati, and they brought in Taylor Powell from Troy to be the new quarterback. Uh, can he be as good or efficient as Bryant? I don't know. That's a lot to ask. Uh, the passing game was efficient, but they were number 82 in rushing success rate last year. They need offensive linemen to step up here. Um, and as far as the guys that they lost, uh, one of the big ones, Mike Van Hoven, the center, uh, he's a he was a key key part of that offensive line. Uh, without him, you know, we'll see we'll see what they look like. Um, they do return uh, Jose Ramirez on the def- uh, defensive line, defensive tackle there. Uh, wide receiver Hassan Baden, uh, live excuse me, left guard uh, Saidi Sow and Darius Boone, the running back, are back. So you've got guys that that have a lot of experience there. Uh, the defense. They got 14 players returning with 200 plus snaps each, but again, the question is: Are any of them good? They were number 113 in PPA per drive on defense last year, number 127 in defensive rushing success rate allowed, defensive passing success rate allowed, at number 115 in the country. Uh, that ain't good. That is, I mean, they. It, I don't even know how to quantify how bad it is because uh, we saw the same thing with some of these other teams. Like it, some of these defenses were just putrid. Um, and they just gave up explosive plays all the time, et cetera, except for these guys. They were number 15 in explosive play rate, which was crazy. Uh, my question here is, has Creighton already peaked as the coach? Now, they've made four bowl games since 2016. Before he showed up, the last winning season was in 1994, and they had only made two bowl games in their existence. This is a really, really difficult job. The roster is always bottom 30 nationally. But as far as team strength with the experience and everything else tied in, they're sixth in the MAC this year. If you can keep the offense rolling, that's one thing, but the defense still has to be better. Uh, this roster does not show me a bowl game, but you know, the, my trust in Chris Creighton might actually get me there again, which, by the way, I'm, I need to bring this up. Uh, their defensive passing game coordinator and their safeties coach for the last seven years, Fred Reed, uh, just died on Sunday. So what what exactly was his role? How much does that play in? Does the team fight, uh, you know, for his memory? Or, you know, I'm curious what something like that does for a team like this. Uh, do they have this crazy year uh, because they lost him in the offseason? I'm curious about that. Um, and there's no news on that, by the way. They said it was a medical emergency. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a shame to hear that we... You know, thoughts and prayers, the the typical cliche, uh, cliche thing, but obviously thoughts are with uh, the team and the family and everything else with Fred Reed. But uh, overall, this is this is not a greatly built team. Uh, I just, you know I love Chris Creighton. I couldn't get there. I've got him 5-7. and seven. But, I mean, if they made a bowl game, it would not surprise me um, because it's the MAC. What, uh, what do you think here? Uh, I think this team is going to be up and down. I think it's going to be – I think they're going to struggle. I think they're going to struggle to to look consistent offensively and defensively. I, I don't know that they do anything great. That's my biggest problem with this team. I don't know if there's anything that they're really, really good at. The only thing that we're good at last year was uh, was their passing success rate was number 17. Their rushing success rate was number 82. Uh, yeah. but, but they lost their quarterback. So, you know, when he transferred over to Cincinnati, it, like Taylor Powell was not great in Chip Lindsay's offense at uh, Troy. So, you know, he's got talent, but does it show here? Like, can Creighton coach I him know. up? I, I gave him five and seven. I got no idea if that's close, if that's good. There's nothing that – and I don't mean to be insulting. There's nothing that they do on paper and last year on film that has 
that that I would I would use the word impressive. I I've got like I've got an idea that they could be all right. So they play Eastern Kentucky. Uh, they've got Buffalo at home. They've got UMass at home. Uh, they play at Akron. Um, you know, those are those are some of the wins that I see. I even gave them a win over Toledo just because it would be the most, you know, Chris Creighton thing ever and the most Jason yeah. Candle thing ever. Um, so that's how I've got them to five and seven. But, like, you tell me that they beat Northern Illinois uh, or Ball State or any, anybody else. Like, it makes sense to me because Chris Creighton is such a good coach. Uh, yeah. Proof of that, by the way, turnover margin last year, number 43. Penalties per game, they were number one in the country with the least penalties per game. They do not beat themselves. Like, but I, I don't know, I don't know how to quantify that into wins, right? Like that's they're just they're not as talented as some of these other uh, some of these other teams in the division. Uh, so you know, so long as they don't beat themselves, like you're going to be able to find another winner here, right? Yeah. Some some of these teams, some of these teams I have with a very similar record are, are one or two games better than them, and and it's. You know, do I think they're going to be consistent? No. But do I think they're good? Yes. Like, I think that they show flashes of either being a really good defensive team, and if they can just keep the scoring under control, they can win those games. Are teams that can score well, and if they can just get stops here or there, the ball bounces their way. Like, I think they show positive aspects. on that. I really can't figure out what Eastern Michigan's good at. That's, and I, I, think, that's the, I think that's the one – I think that's the one thing that makes me – if I was going to give no pick on anything for this team, it, this would be the or in this conference, the whole conference. I'd have been like, this is the one team that I don't, I don't know anything about that I can honestly say I think this, and I think that that's actually real. I don't know. I just, and that's just being honest. I know that's a terrible analysis for anybody <laughs> listening to try to actually, but that's I don't know. I, I'd rather not lie to you. I don't want to do some hyperbole thing and be like, oh, I think they're going to go eight and four and try to sell you a bunch of bullshit or you know, talk trash and say they're going to be terrible. I don't know. It's, it, you, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.